Very good morning. Welcome to Chart Busters. Well, this is a show where we'll highlight all the buzzing stocks. For the time being, things look good at the start of the trading session. Unfortunately, the Nifty has come off the high point of the day. You need to keep in mind that whatever the global queues were, we already had a good 450-point rally in the last few trading sessions. So a lot of that good news is priced in. As that intraday chart is telling you, the Nifty has come off all the way from around the 10,700-odd mark to around 10,620. Some using this as a bit of an exit opportunity. Also, I think you need to pull up the Asian markets because they were holding with strong gains this morning, up close to around half a percent to at least one, one and a half percent as well. Some of those markets have come off the high point of the day, but the real pain really is seen in uh, the breadth of the markets because the mid cap index, after doing a relative outperformance, is now doing a relative underperformance. Um, those two lines, they decided, let's meet early on itself. So they've come, they've kissed each other, and now you have a few more stocks that are declining in comparison the number of stocks that are advancing. Crude prices, that's going to be top focus. Yesterday, crude ended closer towards $80 per barrel. Today, it moved up to around $81.5 per barrel. Hey, Manglam. Hi, Nigel. You know, about the crisscross lines, they tell you the story of the day. When we opened, you know, 14 stocks in the green for one in the red, and now we have, uh, not only did they kiss each other at 10, they have, uh, you know, uh, locked themselves into an extended cuddle, yeah. if you must. And when the mid-cap index does underperform, it looks like, you know, there is a risk for the frontline index as well. Yesterday, we saw a lot of writing at the 10,600 call for a premium of 100 rupees. And that's telling you that a large part of the bears perhaps believe that maybe, maybe, uh, staying above that 10,700 mark uh, would be a bit of a hurdle. Yeah. Yeah. And that is where, uh, you know, we've seen some bit of a slide from the top. Mm -hmm. And it will be very interesting to see where we go from here, whether this dip intraday would be bought into or not, given the last couple of sessions the intraday dips were bought into. Uh, that's right, uh, Manglam. And yesterday we saw the rupee as well strengthening that's right. uh, to around 73.4. Uh, Today it showed some strength, but that as well was quickly uh, given up as well. So just keep the rupee as well in mind. Currently it's at around 73 and a half. But really, we had such a big rally, irrespective of what the global queues were. The US market had its best rally since March. You know, uh, some would come out there and say there is some bit of fear in the market. They would have said, or maybe just safe. taking some money yeah, off some ahead money of the, the holiday because tomorrow is uh, the holiday and money market is not working tomorrow as well. So let's see how that goes. So let's get straight then to the top yep. stories as we speak. The top stories this morning: Infosys among the top Nifty gainers as revenues beat estimates in the second quarter with a 4.2% constant currency growth, but margins miss expectations. The company secures large deals worth over two billion dollars. And another top Nifty uh, mover today is Hero Motor Corp. The earnings meet street expectations. The management says that they do not foresee any problems in this festive season. Still expect a 8 to 10 percent demand growth. JNK Bank surges over 11 percent today. Strong loan growth drives earnings ahead of street estimates. The slippages they fall 67 percent quarter on quarter in the second quarter. And in key earnings to watch out for today, Reliance will report its quarter two numbers. The pet chem business is expected to report another strong quarter. For LGO, strong subscriber addition is expected to drive the revenue growth of around 12.5%. In other important earnings to watch today, we have ACC, Havels, DCB Bank, but some mid-cap IT companies as well, uh, the likes of Scient, Mindtree and NIIT Tech. All of them will be on our radar. Well, what's really sad sentiment today, if you look at the, some frontline stocks, India Bulls, Housing, Finance, the entire you know, NBFC space has come in for selling itself. Uh, the HFC space, if you like to uh, call it that, that in fact is down close to 8.5%. Remember, the market is holding with a gain of around 30 points, but India Bulls, Housing, Finance has seen some selling. They did a growth, loan book growth of around 27 28%, but clearly the street seems to be factoring in that that will not be possible going ahead, and the management sounded quite conf uh, side, quite conscious as well yesterday. Uh, so keep in mind the stock was at 950 rupees yesterday today it is around 830 rupees and dhfl and all the other stocks canfin homes repco home finance all of them have seen a lot of selling but what's the trade on the nifty from here ashwini gujral is with us ashwini we have come off from around the 10700 odd mark so it's a 70 point downtick from the top do you expect some selling from here do you believe that we can move into the red and will you short the index or do you believe that in fact this dip should be bought into See, along with the reasons that both of you have given, the biggest reason is that the market was way too long going into the 200-day moving average, around you know, 10,700 thereabouts. And now we can use any sort of reason, housing finance, this, that, to cool off. I think uh, we are correcting, and we are correcting from fairly significant levels, 
As far as today is concerned, I think more selling should be on, on the way because uh, people who went long in the morning are losing money. Those who went long yesterday are fearful of losing money. So my sense is given the overall pressure on financials, I wouldn't be surprised if we go into the red at some point. Uh, nearest support is about 10,500, uh, 520 uh, thereabouts on the Nifty. Again, 25,500 uh, is the nearest support on Bank Nifty. So uh, both these indices uh, having run up, I think uh, now deserve some sort of profit booking and that profit booking uh, can look, uh, you know, from the highs, maybe four or 500 points lower on Bank Nifty, 150 on the Nifty. So, uh, you know, 10, 500 and uh, 25, 500 will really decide if we are going further down or whether this is just a correction from the 200 day moving average. But definitely financials are not uh, really showing great amounts of confidence. So Repco Home is a sell with a stop of 348, target of 330. Canfin Home is a sell with a stop of 239, target of 224. And Ambuja Cement is a buy with a stop of 223. Uh, target of 236. All right, 10,500 on the Nifty and 25,500 on the Nifty Bank. Ashwini, important for the Nifty Bank for uh, it to stay above that 25,500 mark given there was a lot of put writing out there as well. It is the weekly options expiry. We take your point. Uh, one stock uh, I, I wanted your view on Ashwini is Aisha Motors. Opened with a gain of 2.5%, went all the way up to 3% as well and now is seeing uh, the gains reverse. In fact, actually is currently trading at the lower end of today's trading range briefly dipped into the red as well. Aisha Motors, what would you say, has corrected all the way upwards from upwards of 30,000, came to about 20,000 odd, seen a bit of a rally from there, and now that is being sold into. See, the whole point here is whether it's Aisha, Maruti, whatever, they've had, you know, four good years. Now, I mean, how many bikes can people go on buying? So my sense is the next one, one and a half years, uh, these auto stocks will consolidate, bottom out, etc. I think a lot of stocks which had, uh, you know, nice pullback rallies are now giving up their gains and the weakest stocks do, uh, do it before the others. So NBFCs, they've started falling before others. Uh, you know, autos, they've started to uh, come off. So basically, if you want to know the strongest stocks uh, from a decline, those are the first to bounce back. The weakest stocks, uh, after, after a rally, they are the first ones to fall. But overall, auto is not as strong as it was in the last uh, three or four years. All right, Ashwini, thanks a lot for joining in and giving us your view. We will keep coming back to you all through the remainder of this day. But talking about autos itself, we have an auto ancillary with us. Mahindra CIE, the stock on our radar after reporting their strong set of numbers for the third quarter. We have uh, uh, Mr. Luthra, the chairman of the company, joining us in our studios itself. Thanks a lot, Mr. Luthra, for thanks. joining us. Welcome. And uh, wish you season's greetings as well. Uh, good results, uh, but a word on the margins. The operating margins came in at 13.5%. Remember the last time you said you are looking at 15% plus, and 13.5% is despite a 10% bump up that you got from uh, the currency. So anytime soon where we can see 15%? I think the, uh, I have to use the correct phrase, the black sheep. I was going to say something else, but <laughs> the black sheep is um, Europe. Okay. okay and where the growth hasn't been as good as we like. Mm -hmm. And also what happens is that remember that in the in Europe you shut down in August. Mm -hmm. Okay, So once you shut down in August, then you are incurring certain fixed overheads without actually having to be able to ship anything. Right. So if, if I look at Europe, okay, while you're concerned about the margins for quarter on quarter, okay, sequential quarter, if I look at the margins, Europe is on year on year is 26% in terms of revenue and 22% up in terms of EBITDA. Mm -hmm. okay. So yes, a particular quarter, but I would not take that as um, symptomatic of um, any kind of problems. All right, uh, Mr. Luthra, then we take that point, but what about going ahead? You're saying in our case, you know, there was a bit of a holiday season that played out, a bit of a shutdown in Europe. That's why we didn't see those margins move towards that 15%. Going ahead, that should be the objective. We that should see... In we are already doing, if I look at some more granular stuff, and you forgive me for using the iPad, but just there's too much of, okay. Um, gears running at 20% EBITDA, stamping running at 12 
forging yeah. the 17 bill yeah. forger 18 ci so forging Mr. Rudram, some, uh, we know, should what, be all right what just we're now trying, what, what we're trying to understand is that since most of your revenue is coming from europe right uh, a majority of it would be coming in from the european markets in comparison to the indian markets what is the benefit of the currency depreciation that's point number one and can we see a bit of an improvement in margins going ahead 50, 100, uh, 50 basis points, 100 basis points, is that possible? See, I don't know whether I'm legally allowed to commit what I will do with the, with the margin. What is your target? My target always has been 15% in okay. terms of EBITDA. And um, if I look at all these numbers, okay, except for our forging plant mm -hmm. in Europe, okay. Okay, the R forging plant means the original okay mm -hmm. where the margins are much lower okay but if you look at the cie forging plant which we inherited as part of the system that's still running at 18 so the only ones that i've got a problem are germany and in england okay. right and um, you'll shortly hear some fixes on both mr lutra you've joined us in our studio so we have to ask you some long strategic questions Absolutely. as well that's the best this, way the that's why i'm here in your of studio course. so you know this is with regards to the promoter stakeholding mm -hmm. so last to last quarter when we spoke mvml had sold five percent stake to cie mm -hmm. over the last quarter to this quarter mvml stake has come down further from 12 and a half percent to about 11 and a half percent and one of the promoter entity i think it was prudential management right. two and a half percent they held stake they've completely exited mm -hmm. What's the plan? I'm not Mahindra. But? I'm Mahindra CIE, okay? And uh, I'm extremely proud of the fact, and I think so would Anand Mahindra B and so would Anton B, uh -huh. that um, uh, we've created tremendous value for Mahindra. But value Which unlocking is happening, I think, <laughs> the way... Uh, that's their strategy, okay? And maybe there are some commitments that Mahindra has with respect to its investment in two-wheelers, electric car, uh, and a whole bunch of stuff, okay? Um, as long as they are there, um, they are respected partners. Mm -hmm. Even if they are not there, they will be respected partners. There is enough demand in the market. I think the first lot that Mahindra sold was about 255. Prudential is a family office, mm -hmm. okay, so I don't link it to MVML. Yeah. Uh, and they sold, I think, about 265, 280. And um, there is enough demand in the market. I think you saw last week um, some additional purchases by Acacia. Um, mm -hmm. and, um, if Mahindra needs to reduce if their Mahindra stake... If Mahindra is selling, CIA is not willing to buy more? Because they increased their stake to 56% as well. The no, first I don't think that's a great idea because if you talk about strategy, we must have higher float. Hmm. That's number one. Okay, And we want retail investors to participate, number two. Number three, I think we made public the fact that all global forging operations, including Brazil, China, and Mexico, yeah. okay, would be folded into this Mahindra CIE so that there's no conflict of interest and no governance issues at all. Okay. Now, if you fold Brazil, China, and Mexico into Mahindra CIE, you have to do it at values that are acceptable to um, Mahindra CIE shareholders. Right. Whatever numbers you choose, okay, if they're folding those businesses in, once they have stabilized, because yeah. just now they are still in the process of being, okay, um, that 56 could go higher. Okay. So we want to increase the float, and that's why it's not a great idea, in my opinion, um, for CIA to have anything more than that. You know, Mr. Luthra, you mentioned that you would like uh, retail to participate as well, you know, be part of uh, the Mahindra CIA family on the whole. Uh, tell us a couple of details. One is that margins of 15%. Uh, do you look at it, uh, you know, do you believe that you can hit that uh, number in FY19, or is it an FY20 target? Point number one, and second, you were talking about demand. In Europe, there have been various, uh, you know, reports that suggest that there is a slowdown in demand in Europe. Any signs out there, or uh, is everything intact? See, um, <laughs> there is been some concerns as to what will happen as a result of diesel gate. Mm. Okay. okay, Ford and uh, I mean the Volkswagen and others have had some issues. Yeah. yeah. But the interesting part of this deal with Mahindra CIE was that. The original Mahindra Sistec was servicing the truck mm -hmm. market and mm -hmm. CIE was servicing the passenger car market. Mm -hmm. So if you take a little bit of a problems in the passenger car market, there's more than enough in the um, truck market. So yeah, they are looking at a growth of 2-3%. Okay, that's fine. And um, in India, we are saying um, that we should be growing 50% higher than the market. Okay. okay, so in order to your specific question, yes, 15% EBITDA is um, the target and is possible. In this year or next year? 
We are looking at, I would hope that it should be ASAP because I am not sure whether SEBI is watching over my shoulder and saying <laughs> I'm, pre I'm, I'm predicting certain specific margins. All right. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Mr. Luthra, for joining in and giving us uh, all those details about the company. We appreciate you. I also want to add right. one more yeah. thing which you people Go haven't ahead, asked sir. since everybody asked me the same question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And that's about, everybody asked me about electric vehicles. Mm. Right. Oh. Okay. Everybody asked me about electric vehicles. Yeah. If you haven't, then I'm going to volunteer yeah, something. Please, Go uh, for tell it. us, is that a risk? Not at all, okay. because what you see just now is okay, that the government says that by 2030, 40% of the cars should be, mm. in that year, closing year, should be electric. Mm. Okay. And if you do the simple arithmetic of taking 3 million cars and taking it up to 10% growth or whatever, and mm -hmm. they become 9 million, mm. an additional 70 million cars will come on the road by 2030. Ah. 56 million of those cars will be internal combustion engine hybrid or thereof. Right. And what everybody forgets is that 62% of the petrol that is consumed in the country is by two wheelers. Mm. Okay. So the migration to electric is more important for two wheelers than for four wheelers. And the Mahindra CIE exposure to electric is less than 20, 22% of his total turnover. All right, we take your point. Thanks a lot. Okay. And the numbers that you're projecting are a little scary from a traffic perspective as well. 70 million cars coming on the street by 2030. Let's see. Wish okay. you good luck on that. Uh, but before we do that, just to look at the markets, BPCL, that stock is off 5% from the high point of the day, seeing a bit of a nick as we speak. Oil price uh, should come up for you. Crude was about that 81 and a half dollars per barrel mark. Let's see whether it has seen an incremental spike or not. Uh, in any case, we will watch out for that. Yes, it is still at 81 and a half. We take a break, but before we do that, Zareen Darwala, the CEO of Standard Chartered Bank, was also named in the Fortune's India list of top 25 powerful women in business. Watch her in action with other business leaders at the jury round of the most coveted business awards, the India Business Leader Awards, as it returns in its 14th year. That action begins at 2 this afternoon, only on CNBC TV 18.